Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl Cohen. I'm with Arthritis Consumer Experts and we host Arthritis at Home. It's really my pleasure to be here uh, today with Ms. Serena Kangura. Uh, we're so happy to have you on the program. Uh, Serena, welcome. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> Yay! Uh, for our audience's benefit, Serena, I'm going to tell them a little bit about uh, you. Um, you were first diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis seven years ago. Uh, you're a chartered professional accountant, and you actually work uh, with Vancouver Coastal Health at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. You have a whole pile of interests, which I love, and they include uh, running and yoga, hanging out with your family. Uh, and I happen to know your little addition to your family, most recently, Jovi, your your Bernadoodle, uh, <laughs> who is delightful. Um, and, and you like traveling. You, you basically love to live a full life with rheumatoid arthritis. Um, for the audience, we're here to chat with you a bit about uh, your experience so far with pregnancy. So, mm -hmm. so let's start at the beginning. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, yourself, Serena, your age, if you're comfortable sharing it, um, and, and what brings you really as a fully formed person to, to this discussion? Um, so yeah, as you mentioned, um, so I was diagnosed with RA, um, about seven years ago and, uh, my journey has definitely been, um, I guess it's not, it was a windy sort of path <laughs> to get to where I am now, seven years later, um, uh, I think I, being the age I was at the time and my career sort of starting off where it was, um, having the news of having RA was, was shocking, but I also don't think I understood what, what it meant. Um, so for a long period of time, I think I put it on the back burner um, and didn't, yeah, didn't really make it a focus of my life, but not in a positive way, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I was, you know, my treatments were sort of up and down and um, I would feel, you know, what it, I know I didn't feel good, but I didn't really do anything to change that. I just sort of became used to it. Um, and eventually a couple years ago, I um, started having, uh, you know, severe arthritis in my shoulder, yeah. um, which resulted in the shoulder replacement that I had in June of last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, what you've described, Serena, is so common, obviously. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think that's where you and I have bonded in our conversation, sort of outside of the virtual uh, setting um, what, like this. I think uh, I saw so much of myself in you. I, too, tried to sort of just, you know, you, you kind of pretend it's not there, uh, but it, it doesn't uh, stop from reminding you every day that it is there. And at a certain point, you have to really kind of wake up and think, oh, I can do things to reclaim, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of who I was, if not all of it. So, um, yeah, shoulder replacement's gone well. It has. It, yeah. it went very well. I'm still in the process, of course, of doing physio and recovering. Yeah. Uh, but that was basically the big turning. A, a year prior to the shoulder replacement was a big turning point for me in my journey. Yeah. And to connect with you. Um connecting with my rheumatologist and getting myself into a, um, a healthier routine yeah. and more of like a stable treatment plan um, yeah. that I can commit to. <laughs> you know, it's funny, probably like you, I, I can remember the day where I felt I really turned a corner where yeah. I was going to be in control again. Um, in your journey, probably even before you got rheumatoid arthritis, uh, there was a little thought bubble up in your head that said, maybe I'll have children someday. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us a little bit about that and what you experienced, how that may have changed or not when you were diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Did you, mm -hmm. did you get disappointed? Did you think you couldn't have kids? Did you think, oh, you would have kids, but you'd wait? Like, just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I've, I definitely, from a young age, prior to being diagnosed, knew one day that I wanted to have a family. Yeah. Um, and I never really thought about 
it other than that. Like one day when I'm older, I'm going to still settle down. I'm going to have kids and I'm going to have a family. And so, um, like I mentioned, when I got diagnosed with RA, because of the age, I was just 24 at the time. So I didn't link it right away to what's going to happen when I want children. I didn't even think about the impact the disease could have. Um, so for several years, basically up until 20, I would say 28, I never connected the two. I never thought about it because I was focused on other things at the time in my life. Um, so around 28 is when I, my husband and I see, got serious about thinking about when we wanted to maybe start a family. And I think that's when I had the initial what ifs go through my head about, you know, what if, um, you know, what if RA makes it hard for me to carry? What if I, you know, what if it's hereditary and my child could potentially get RA? You know, would I, would I be able to live with myself knowing that? Um, what, you know, the guilt I might feel, um, can I carry a child to full term? So those were some of the thoughts I had initially um, in terms of how the disease could impact yeah. me being able to carry. Um, and Who did you go to for answers about those things, your rheumatologist? The first point of contact was my rheumatologist. Yeah. And I'm lucky in that my rheumatologist um, was only able to share positive things with me and and re, and not positive in that there was an evidence behind it it was evidence-based positive information that made me feel um much more confident in making the decision to go ahead with starting a family um a lot of those questions and doubts that I had um went out the window after yeah. my conversation with her um and then, I mean, I reached out to you next. Um, I mean, that was around, so when I was 28, there were some questions and then my rheumatologist answered those and life went on, uh, life went on. And then well, this year before getting pregnant, I would say, so maybe at the beginning of 2021, when we were really serious, okay, this yeah. is what we're going to try. I knew I had the shoulder replacement coming up. So we decided we're going to go ahead with the shoulder replacement first before I start trying because, um, Again, that was a, a piece that it was in my puzzle of timing of when would be the right time. So, yeah. And I mean, I think yeah. not dissimilar from how someone would talk with their life partner about family planning, regardless of RA, right? Yeah. You yeah. have to figure things out. What's, you know, what's going to create the best environment for baby, for you, for your partner. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when it comes to a joint that just is, is pretty critical to caring for baby, yeah. You have to actually figure that out. Yeah. yeah. And so that's where my surgeon came into the picture as well. So I also had my orthopedic surgeon who um, is very familiar with rheumatoid arthritis and um, his input was important. So I relied heavily on um, my care team um, yeah. in decisions that I made leading up to before conceiving. So I, I had the shoulder replacement um, in June. And prior to that, I had been off of medications that could, um, that I needed to be off of. Um, so methotrexate. Methotrexate yeah. primarily. Yeah. yeah. Methotrexate is the one that I was off. Um, and I, I've been off of that for just over a year now. Um, and so once my shoulder replacement was done, I connected with my rheumatologist in July and she said, if you're feeling ready and you want to try, you can start trying because you can do your physio, you can heal your shoulder um, through that process like, yeah. as you're, you know, yeah. um, even if you're pregnant. So, yeah. so we didn't waste too much time. <laughs> <laughs> and I, um, uh, lucky, luckily I was, I was pregnant by October. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, huge congratulations again. You know, I've said that to you a number of times, but it can never be too many times to say congratulations. Um, how have you found your body and your RA in particular? Now you you're on a biologic that you can continue through pregnancy. Yeah. So there was a time when there wasn't a safe biologic necessarily. Not not I don't want to say unsafe, but there is data on one particular biologic um, that you're on that says mm -hmm. it's safe to use through pregnancy. Does it cross the placenta? So it's safe during breastfeeding as well. 
Um, and so I'm assuming your RA has been fairly well controlled through pregnancy. There was a time women had to come off all their therapies and this, for some reason, and still unknown to us, science hasn't delivered the answers, women mostly go into remission when they're pregnant. Do you feel, even though you're still on your, except for methotrexate, of course, mm -hmm. that you're still on your biologic, do you feel your, your RA has had even more improvement or, or is it basically the same, well-controlled? I would say um, what one big thing for me when I was planning to, to start trying was I wanted to make sure my RA was under control. Yeah. So um, I was regular, you know, I had done a few months of looking at my blood work and making sure things were in normal range. My yeah. CRP levels were, you know, good. And then um, my body felt good. And so yeah. I would say that um, I'm lucky in that I have been pretty steady since then in that okay. um my body was feeling pretty good prior to um becoming pregnant and I'm still feeling pretty good <laughs> yeah that's amazing um did you make any lifestyle changes did anything that you did uh sort of leading up to and now in the first part of your pregnancy is there anything that you, that really stands out for you Serena um, well, it's interesting because a lot of my changes happened along with my shoulder. When I was getting ready for my shoulder replacement, I started taking exercise a lot more seriously. Okay. I was running, um, so doing a lot of cardio and strength training. Um, and I continued to do that until after my shoulder replacement. And I'm planning on now picking up some, whatever I can again um so strength training and cardio for sure have been added to my exercise routine um in terms of uh, life like food choices yeah. um i do try to eat whole foods but i don't i don't um feel guilty or or prevent myself from like indulging if I have a craving. So like any pregnant woman, you know, sometimes you'll crave some fast food or, you know, something that's not so good for you and I'll, I'll have it and not feel guilty. Yeah. Um, but I make sure I still have my greens or I have a smoothie or, you know, make, a, so primarily my food intake has nutritious and, yeah. uh, and whole foods. Um, yeah. The one big thing that I, um, that I did, ensure that I had regularly on top of my prenatals is folate or folic acid. Right. Yeah. Um, just cause I was on methotrexate. I know once you're off of it for three months, you're, you know, cleared, but, um, I continued to take an extra folate. Well, I think it's recommended actually in pregnancy in general. So mm -hmm. you were already into a routine uh, yeah. that most pregnant women are, are, are referred into, uh, frankly. So that's a yeah. good thing, right? Yeah. Um, when you um, when you thought about your medications uh, regimen, like were you nervous to stop something that was working well for you, or did you just it was easy to do because you knew it was what you had to do to become pregnant? It was easy for yeah. me. Um, it was a little um, nerve wracking in that I didn't know how my body was going to feel after. So there was that waiting period of, will my inflammation levels increase again? Will I start having swelling? And is that going to be a problem with me being able to try to start a family? Um, so there is, the, the, you know, there is that little bit of a waiting period when yeah. you're trying to see how is your body doing without it, without it. Um, but the biologic that I was on luckily was enough on its own. Yeah. to keep everything well under control on top of changing life, you know, my small changes, I think to my lifestyle with the exercise regularly. Yeah. And the food. Boy, mm -hmm. exercise. I, I have to say for myself though, uh, I haven't had children myself and certainly I'm not pregnant. Um, but I, I exercise is, um, it's just the best medicine. Hey, sometimes it is. Yeah. Physically and mentally. I yeah. think, yeah, the mental, like I haven't been able to um, because after my shoulder, I had to 
wait a little while before I could get into intense exercising. And then, you know, you kind of, the holidays came. And so <laughs> I've just sort of been in this, you know, I haven't really picked it up, but I'm starting to now feel that mental lack as well. Like I need it back in my life. Yeah. Feel normal again. Yeah. So you're now at 17 weeks. Is that right? Or 18? 18. 18 weeks. Yeah. So how's it going? I must say I am doing very well. (laughs) I feel very blessed and very lucky. Um, I have talked to, you know, I've had many friends that have been pregnant over the last couple of years, family, um, and, you know, heard lots of stories from all sorts of women. And um, I've had a fairly... Um, I guess you could say easy <laughs> pregnancy so far. Touch wood. Um, Touch wood. Yes, I know. I should come off on wood. <laughs> I've been, um, you know, you had a little bit of the morning sickness at the beginning that yeah. most women experience. Um, I'd have had my, I've had two ultrasounds and the baby's heart rate was, was good. Um, saw my midwife recently and everything seems to be healthy um blood work was good as well so so far I feel very normal like I don't feel like RA has impacted my experience yeah that's Uh, and if there is yeah if there is like a day like you know my hip is hurting a little but then I tell myself if that that could just be a part of your you know any woman that's pregnant can go through yeah so I don't you know I catch myself getting worried oh you know why is my hip hurting could it be you know but it's been a lot of mental, um, uh, practicing a lot of the mental um, health tools I've learned over the years of yeah. trying to stay present, staying calm, um, taking it one day at a time. So I even, re- you know, with my hip, I'm realizing, oh, no, today's feeling a little bit better. Maybe it is that I just need to stretch and it's just stiff and that sort of a thing. So yeah, it's, um, it's been, it's been very nice. It's been a lot of, a very a great experience so isn't far. That incredible. isn't that yeah. incredible well as you know I've, I've twisted your arm and, and asked you to commit to doing another episode when baby is with us yeah um, which is gonna be so exciting uh we're so happy about that I just have one other little question and that is um what about support? What what would you say to our audience, Serena, about the types of support you have to have in place now and, and looking forward to uh, delivery? So I think that um, there's three sort of main support systems. There's going to be a rheumatologist um, that will be heavily involved at the beginning. Yeah. Um, but really their job is just to give you the facts from an RA perspective. Yep. But after that, when it comes to carrying the child, anything to do with the pregnancy or ultrasound appointments, all of that is going to be through your OBGYN or your yeah. midwife. Right. Now, I decided to go through a midwife. Um, and luckily, I didn't think about this before I picked my midwife. Um, but the team I have there is very um, well informed on RA patients. Right. They've had several. Um, so I think that that's something you can maybe try and ask up front when you are looking for an OBGYN or a midwife if they've had um, experience with RA uh, patients before uh, it's very helpful because they they kind of like you know she's all they've already talked to me about you know when I'm in labor what sort of positions may be harder for me um, or what can we change so that it's you know I can be more comfortable um, super important yeah. what a great pointer yeah yeah ask ask right yeah. right yeah uh, we, you might be surprised as you were to learn how much they do know yeah um, it also speaks I think about rheumatoid arthritis and the prevalence in women obviously mm-hmm. two out of three who get it are women so it's not mm-hmm. shouldn't be that rare a topic really for no people who are and you think it is, yeah. Pregnancy. Yeah. yeah yeah and you think it is but I was actually I was surprised at how well informed they were she knew about the biologic I was on without me saying anything to her. Fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. they, so I would definitely um, make sure you can try and um, find um, an OBGYN or midwife that has experience because that's been very helpful for me. And then your third is your um, 
your home support system. So your partner or your, your family, your mom, your friend, whoever that will be, um, and being honest with them about how you're feeling day to day. I, one thing I found would be not only do you have the RA <laughs> yeah. to manage, but then your hormones are all over the place. Yeah. So now you're even more emotional. So yesterday I had a bit of a bad day and my, my husband was having a hard time understanding. Um, but I had to just explain to him that, you know, it's overwhelming some days. Yeah. And I think some of it's just hormones with pregnancy. So Absolutely. having conversations, letting them know what you need um, is so important. That's great advice. And, you know, it's funny when you live with a chronic disease, you kind of get used to sometimes accepting things and not being active uh, in terms of help seeking. Mm -hmm. uh, I know for myself, I was never comfortable asking for help, but, but you have to learn when you yeah. have rheumatoid arthritis. It really is an important aspect of self-care. Self-care mm -hmm. uh, includes knowing when you really do need help and, and having uh, the wherewithal to, to do that, to actually seek out the help in the right yeah. places is, is important. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's so important for you on regular, you know, as just as an individual, as a human being to ask for that support when you have yeah. already, and I know how hard it is because I'm like you and that I want to do everything myself. Yeah. I don't, you know, I, I can do it. I can figure it out. It doesn't matter how tired I am or what my body feels like I can do it. And so that's hard. But when you're pregnant, it's, you have to think about, you know, your, your baby and your body, and you want to make sure that that's a priority. So it's even more important to, yeah. you know, to even, you know, sometimes you'll have that struggle of, I don't want to I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to be annoying. And maybe I should be able to do it on my own, but you have to ask for the support you need. Yeah. 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 You can't do it alone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what great information, what valuable sort of insights you've provided to the audience today. We really appreciate chatting with you, Serena. Yeah. I cannot wait to get the, <laughs> I cannot wait to get the news. <laughs> um on baby's arrival and to be able to speak with you again when you're ready mm -hmm. um to share your experience uh just so grateful to you to our audience thanks so much for tuning in um we certainly hope you've enjoyed this episode that found it helpful um whether you're a person living with rheumatic disease or wanting to get pregnant or you know someone who has rheumatic disease and is talking about uh, getting pregnant um please feel free to share this episode with them. And also at the end, we will have a couple of resources for you to check out more information about uh, inflammatory arthritis and pregnancy. So uh, make sure you jot those down as uh, the information uh, rolls by. So thanks again um, to everyone for joining. Serena, thank you. So great to see you. And we really appreciate your time. And uh, again, sharing of your experience. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Anytime. And I look forward to coming back. <laughs> Yay. See you soon. Bye, right. everyone. Be safe. Bye.